Roswell Flight Test Crew, here today to take a look at the Fusion House Racer from Hobbico. To keep up with the latest on drones, be sure to click subscribe. Also, we're members of the Academy of Model Aeronautics, and you should consider joining. They stand up for our rights to fly, and they provide insurance that covers us when we're flying for fun anywhere in the United States, and not just at established fields. So the House Racer comes with everything we need to start flying all in one box. And they've also released this collection of race obstacles. We'll be taking a look at those in our upcoming flight test video. So first up, we have some paperwork. And also something that looks like a pair of propeller guards. We'll set those aside for the moment. So here we have the aircraft itself. And it is very, very lime green. Now I might tell you this is to make it stand out good against the sky, but this aircraft's only ever intended for indoor flying. Anyway, it's pretty bright. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it flies in our next video. Now, if you want to get into FPV racing, this is the aircraft for you. You can have fun while you're learning the basics. It comes with a battery already installed. It's one cell, 650 milliamps. No surprise, it's extremely lightweight. And there's a lot of flex in these limbs and in the propeller guards. That will probably be a benefit when it comes to surviving crashes, and there will be many, I'm sure. The main body of the aircraft is surprisingly stout. Squeezing as hard as I can, I don't feel any flex at all. And up front, under this protective hood, we've got the camera. And I noticed it's angled up slightly, like a full-sized FPV racer. That's so you get a good view, even when the drone is pitched forward in flight. At the back is an LED indicator light. Now there's no sign of a 5.8 video transmit antenna, but I know there has to be one in there somewhere. So this looks like a pair of FPV goggles but it's actually just an empty box with a Fresnel lens. It has a magnetic closure, which is a nice touch, and inside, I found this foam rubber bumper. So in the package underneath the goggles, we've got this small screen with a built-in 5.8 gigahertz receiver, which you can actually insert inside the goggles. This is a nice little package. It comes with a sunscreen already installed, and the controls are very clearly marked on either side. On the top, we have a linear polarized antenna for the video receiver. And on the sides, we've got a slot for a micro SD card, a micro USB jack for charging the internal battery, and a power switch. The aircraft must also have a linear polarized antenna inside, so you'll want to use this in the stock configuration when you're flying the house racer. However, you could easily replace this with a circular polarized antenna, which is sold separately, and it would work great for full-scale FPV racing. On the back is a list of the frequencies it can tune. Here we have the control radio, which is pretty substantial for an indoor aircraft. It comes with this bracket in place for the screen, in case goggles aren't your thing. The left stick stays where you put it in the vertical axis just like an old-school hobby radio. And on the shoulders of the radio are a pair of switches and a pair of buttons. On the left side is a three-position switch that controls flight mode. When the switch is furthest from you, the aircraft is at its least responsive to control inputs. Move it into the middle position and it responds more aggressively. Move it all the way forward and you're in rate mode, which removes all the limits allowing you to manually flip and roll the aircraft. The button on the left side is labeled Picture, but it actually enables the auto flip mode. On the right side is the dual rate switch, which allows you to adjust how quickly the aircraft responds to your inputs. But also on the side, we have a button marked Video, but that doesn't appear to do anything at all. On the back of the radio, we have these rubber pads, so it won't slip through your fingers. And that's a nice touch. Also inside the box 
We've got four AA batteries for the radio, a USB charger for the battery, an A to micro B USB cable for charging the video screen, four spare propellers, and a tiny Phillips head screwdriver. Taking a look at the paperwork, we've got the manual for the aircraft, a manual for the FPV system, and a brochure that tells us how to put together the obstacles, which are sold separately, so I don't really understand what that's doing here. So let's get the batteries charging. Connect the screen and the aircraft battery to a USB power source. Warning, you should never leave a lithium polymer battery charging unattended, even a small one. Install the batteries into the controller and let's verify it powers up. Good. These are called the wall guards and they're included to keep the house racer upright if it hits a wall. You can see where it would tend to tip over after striking a vertical surface. So let's go ahead and install these. So make sure that the controller is turned on and then go ahead and insert the battery into the aircraft and plug it in. Before we can go flying for the first time, we need to calibrate the aircraft, place it on a level surface, and then take the right stick and pull it down and to the right, and then move the left stick down and to the right. The LED on the back of the aircraft will blink rapidly and then glow steadily once calibration is complete. To get the FPV system up and running, begin by inserting a micro SD card. There isn't one included in the kit, so you'll need to supply it. Now, power up the screen. Most likely, the first thing you're gonna see is this white screen. There are 40 different channels available, divided among five bands, so you're probably gonna be on the wrong channel to start off with. Use these buttons on the right side to adjust the band and the channel until you see clear video. This video is latency free because it's using an analog video transmitter, which is a fundamentally different technology than most camera ships use these days. In addition to the video, we have some indicators on the screen, including the total time, the video band, channel and frequency, a memory card indicator, a battery charge indicator for the screen, and a timer that reveals how long it's been recording a video clip. Use the V button to start and stop recording. And the buttons on the left are used to access the menu and select different options. Now this unit doesn't immediately record video onto the micro SD card. Instead, it is stored temporarily in internal memory and then moved onto the card in four minute blocks. Even if you stop recording, Leave the screen turned on for at least 15 seconds to make sure the video is safely recorded on the card. To use the screen with the FPV goggles, go ahead and attach the foam rubber bumper inside the case. Just remove the adhesive pad, press it down right there. Then insert the screen, making sure the antenna lines up with the gap in the lid. So that was our first look at the Fusion House Racer from Habako. We're going to do flight testing in our next video. So to see that, and to keep up with the latest on drones, be sure to click subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Fly safe. Insert the batteries into the radio. They've also released a correct. There are 40 different channels available. Divided. Comes with a sunscreen already installed. It's because I'm good. <laughs>